Okay. So it's a rainy day. I'm probably not gonna ride today. <laughs> In the rain. I've gotten a few questions actually, amazingly. I actually got questions about how my camera is set up. And I got this actually a couple years ago the first time, but I, ne I just never got around to making a video of it. So I figured I'll do that now while well, I have all the helmets available. And I'll start with the one that is the first helmet I really got. The first real helmet is this helmet. It's called the Roof Boxer. We all got our GoPros and they're great and all that. But how do you stick them under the helmet or the bike or the whatever? Well, I didn't want anything permanent. I didn't like the idea of, you know, the adhesive mount, which glues onto your helmet or the, wherever you put it, the side of your face or the bike. And then you always have this fucking mount there, even when you're not using the camera, it's just stuck on. And also I didn't like the idea that someday maybe it could uh, let go. <laughs> you know, it's only glue, really. And it's got a lot of force, continuous force. Uh, with the air pushing on the on this camera, you know, on the face of this at 70 miles an hour, whatever it is, um, some sort of legal speed limit, but definitely the limit. And also all these other little bracketry that would just be sticking off of that. So the longer you make this, when it's stuck on like that, let's say I wanted a shot of my ear, uh, or let's say I want a shot this way, you, you know, this is short. So the leverage coming from the top of this pushing, the wind pushing on this, down here is not so great but when you no one has it like that you have it sticking on an arm that goes up that turns left that goes all around and pretty soon the camera is mounted like this but now the mount the, the adhesive mount is over here so it's on this long articulating arm I don't know why the fuck Hero the GoPro I mean never made as far so far as I know they, maybe they will in the future but I'm making this in the beginning of 2016 so they may have by now, but I don't know if they ever will or they did or not. But when I was buying all this stuff, two, a year and a half ago, two years ago, they didn't have a ball head socket, which is the dumbest thing in the world not to have on a camera. But for whatever reason, so now instead of just being able to have a bracket that comes out and then a ball head, you can you know mount it and swivel it and tilt it however you want to put it and you're done, lock it down, no. We had to have like four or five little arms and elbows all coming out, holding this thing up, uh, doing some kind of like an Egyptian, you know, pose, trying to keep the camera out here. Plus, you end up with all this bracketry uh, all over the place. And I hated that idea. I hated that look. Um, so I didn't want to do that. And also, in the end, I really didn't want to have a mount permanently glued to my helmet anyway. Then how am I going to mount the camera? When you buy it, it's a smooth case like this, right? There's dough holes, and this is actually watertight. You can throw that in the swing pool, the ocean, and it'll, uh, the camera's inside this protective case. They also have cases with an open back like this, and somehow I got the idea that I could uh, stick the camera in there, but then I have these slots. I decided I can mount the camera on the inside of the chin guard using a case like this and straps like uh, this. And I wanted also, the I liked also, besides I didn't like the adhesive sticking on the outside of the helmet just because it's a permanently attached, I also thought the idea of glue was still in a way not quite permanent enough for me. I like a mechanical uh, bond and mechanical attachment where it's on there good. It's, it ain't coming off, you know. You'd have to like tear the front of the helmet off or break these straps to break, to get it off. It's not just I hope the glue doesn't give up. This is not going anywhere. So what I did is I took the Velcro strap, obviously the camera's out, and I laced it through the back of these open slots, this skeleton case they called it. For me it was better to have the long end at the top because it, I wanted it to fasten inside the helmet, not have a tab sticking out so that it wanted to wrap around the, the face shield like this with the, the extra tab at the bottom inside somewhere down there. Um, so, But once you get it where you like 
the strap for whatever shape your helmet is in your face or whatever. Then you put the camera in. Obviously you make sure you have <laughs> your battery and your card in there because once it's together it's a hassle to take out. And everything's charged up. Snapping together. So then I would loop it around the face shield and from the bottom uh, or from the inside somehow you can tie it all together. And what I would do, because this is actually goes up a little bit, so it's low and then it goes high, but the bottom basically stays the same, I would sort of uh, attach it very close to the top, but not quite at the top. In other words, the strap on the bottom is sort of in the center, but I, I don't, I don't uh, start to tighten it until I get it here, because I, fig I found out that you can never really get it exactly tight, tight, tight. You can only get it kind of tight, and it'll never be super tight, because you're still holding on to the thing in order to make it work. If you just get it near the edge, and then once you get it where you like it, then you, I just sort of shoved it over into this higher point. That would actually make it even tighter. Now, right now, this is worn out, so it wants to let go. But it would actually make it really tight, and then it would basically stay there for the ride. Now, I don't know if it would stay there for days, uh, like in other words, after you're done writing, it might not last. But after you're done writing, you want to download your footage. Now you can by simply leaving it attached because you can plug it in from the side. Um, but I would take it apart I, because I just didn't like having it on the helmet all the time because I have this brick in front of my face. But anyways, this is how I would do it. This would give it a fairly snug fit. If this wobbles a little bit like this, which you'll notice in the footage, but you can also feel it once you get it tied down. At first, it'll be very tight. But as this starts to wear out, it starts to get a little bit wobbly, even with all these tricks. Or maybe your helmet doesn't have a bump like that, so you only have a low thing, and you can never really get it super tight. The way to ha handle that is you get some of this uh, painter's tape. Again, going for the non-permanent solution here. If you want to just super glue it to your helmet, that's up to you. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to your helmet. I'm just telling you what I was doing because I didn't want something permanently glued on. Um... So, and then you roll it into a tube, sticky side out, and then you apply it here. Now you might do this before you actually mount it. You, you stick it on just behind the helmet, I mean behind the helmet, between the helmet and the camera. And you have one on each side. It doesn't have to be too big because it's, you know, it's only right against your, it's only between the camera and your face, and your helmet, I mean. So... It doesn't, re you know, you don't have to have a huge ball there. And by having it long, it's, a, it's just enough padding to kind of take up the space between the thickness of this, uh, what ends up being a pad, is, is your strap here, and the space between the helmet and the, and the uh, camera is this pad, but it's only in the middle, and it's so thin that it's able to wobble. So by adding these extra little tubes of stickiness, which now want to stay put because they're sticky, they want to stick to the camera and the helmet because they're sticky and at the same time they're thick enough to take up that little slack. Uh, that, that secures it pretty good actually. Now you can make them bigger, you want to make them fatter, use more tape or whatever you do because it all depends on your on your helmet obviously. This helmet happened to have uh, a type of a, of a peak here which allowed me to you know wedge it up and get it tighter on its own. Uh, this front of this uh, helmet here it doesn't have any vents the vents are on the side here and at the top this front area is basically sort of flat and plain there's no holes or vents so that allowed me to do a lot of this kind of stuff without worrying about it sometimes I would keep this thing on there and I would use it as a way of uh, pressing against the front of the helmet to get the angle right for the, to make this angle stay there I would kind of wedge it against the helmet like that and then I would tighten it down, of course. Actually, what I would normally do is have this camera way up here. Because my thinking was, when I'm standing up, it looks like it's pointing too high. Let me just secure this. But you never ride like this. When you ride, your head is kind of like looking down, which means now the camera's pointing straight ahead, like it should be, which is what you want. A lot of people, I think, put their camera you know, dead center with like their eye line, 
and then they wonder why in the footage they look they're always looking at the gauges or the ground or the handlebars it's because they're aiming at their, their, their camera normal kind of quote unquote normal but it's actually incorrect because no one rides with their head like this the people ride with their head like this so now your camera's looking down so I always mounted it a little higher and that's why my footage usually you know I, I would avoid getting just my gauges in the whole in the whole shot the whole damn time and that's how I did it on this one now how did I do with sound well instead of being uh, you know less cheap <laughs> there are different adapters to get sound from from a microphone into your GoPro and I did buy one of those this is the GoPro version uh, the, I think the, you can buy them separately also and what I would do is plug that in here and on the other end it's just a jack a standard jack for any kind of a, I think it's what is that 3.5 size or whatever it's called and what I would do is I would plug in the headset that came with my iPhone so with this I did I, and then I realized I also realized that I don't, what everyone does is they have that uh, that little oval thing that's near the near the earbuds it's on one of the sides or maybe it's on the main cable no it's not on the main cable it's on one of the sides but mine's inside the helmet now and they think that's the microphone <laughs> and you always see people holding it up to their mouth talking and it's not the microphone at all the microphone is inside the earbuds it goes through your head essentially However, I tried experimenting with plugging that into my head while I'm wearing the helmet and the sound was horrible. I could barely, barely hear myself. So what I ended up doing is wrapping it up inside the, there's that bar I'm talking about. It's actually a volume control. You can see a minus and a plus. That's really what it's for. But what I would do is wrap up the, uh, those earbuds inside of let me just take the camera off now. And I'd wrap the earbuds up, and then I'd wrap them up in fur. And that's how, and then I would tape that to the inside of this uh, the mouth guard. And that was how I used my. That's how I got my sound. So this wrapped up, and in some of my videos, you might see this all you know rolled up into loops, and kind of hanging out to the side. Or you'll even see now I have another version where I do this kind of a thing stuck inside the helmet, but the. Uh, the camera, for example, is mounted to the dash or the front of the bike somewhere on the gauges or something. And you just see the white cable. Now in my other helmet, I essentially did the same thing uh, as what I'm showing you here. It was the straps with the uh, some tape to help secure it left and right and wobble. and it worked fine the and also I had this solution with it taped inside like I just showed you that that would be this helmet here however this helmet didn't have this you know hoop, uh, hump where you could kinda get it nearby and then use that extra bump to help tighten it down for yourself kind of ratcheting it down. Here it's all the same level so this would just have to be uh, tightened down as best as I can and then use the tape to help secure it more so that's also another good reason for it um, because this is so narrow this little foot didn't really help like it did pushing off the chin on this one and also because this is fl flat area basically but it's kind of curving up the camera could be mounted slightly facing up. Here it's very flat. This basically is flat up and down. So there's no real way to mount it higher. And that's basically how I did it on that one. Again, this would close no problem. Just like on the other one, I would mount it so that I wouldn't hit the uh, thing. But that, that also took a little bit of space. As you can see, the camera now would be lower. So this one actually has a lot more problems and complications and it still works it's no it's not a big it's not a problem like it's impossible it's just less convenient and less options it's right in front of the vent which I never used by the way so it didn't really matter I have another review of this helmet actually which you are welcome to look it up bell bullet helmet review 
see what you think. So anyways, this is my first helmet. I really like it a lot, I'm hanging on to it. But I also liked uh, this one a lot, this uh, Ruby Castell. Uh, St. Rock, it's called. Ruby Castell St. Rock. And it doesn't come with these stripes. I added that. That's reflective pinstriping I added. It's just a matte, uh, what's this called? A matte carbon fiber. <laughs> Uh, but again, I'll get into a review if, if people want to see a review of this later. Uh, for now, I didn't want to uh, do the same thing with this that I was doing on that, which would have been basically mounting it through this part. Because Now this was a little more tricky, because although this was wider and gave me the options that that one did, does, it's, it's also not flat. This is actually the best overall helmet with this extra edge the way it's basically flat, kind of rounding up to the top. This helmet is the best for mounting something right in front. This helmet is, is good because it's got the, the height, unlike the uh, bullet, but it's also got this peak ridge thing happening, which is, I guess, good for being aerodynamic and all that. There's one on top, you can see. Um, and it looks good, but what now the ca that's one more extra thing that the camera's got to be resting on. So when you put the camera on there, you really have to put a lot more tape to really almost get it up off the surface. You have to almost make a little platform for it to rest against and be pressed against. Then you can strap it around. But I never really cared for having this on the front of my face anyway. Even on that helmet I didn't like it. It was just easy. That's just the first thing I figured out. So and I didn't really know what to do. So I never really did it like this on this helmet, although it would, it would work the same way, just fine. What I did instead is, as you've probably seen in some of my videos, I just started mounting the hel this camera to the front to the camera pointing back at me. It was my me camera. And then you would see these white cord going up inside underneath. That's where I still had my microphone mounted. And that was how I did it for a while, maybe uh, six months or eight months or a year. And then, just when I was trying to figure out what am I going to do, I'm not sure, I don't really care for that either. The helmet cam is good because no matter where I'm looking, the camera looks. And with these other setups, I couldn't do that unless I mounted that, that brick onto the front of this helmet, which I didn't really want to do. Uh, I'll be honest, you know, uh, I really love the design of this helmet and the aesthetics of it. And um, I didn't want to just have a huge thing on the front of it. However, right about the time I was wondering what to do, Cena came out with a new invention where they mounted a, they, they built in a camera into their uh, communication device. And that's what this thing is. It's called the Cena 10C. It had all these other features besides. I'm not just replacing the GoPro with another camera that's smaller. Then I'd feel like, well, I already have a camera. Why do I rent? No, I need another camera. Um, just because it's a smaller profile, it's not that big a deal. The thing is, it's not just a smaller camera, it's also got uh, FM radio, I can communicate with other headsets, if I had any friends that had this, uh, I could ride with. And um, I can make phone calls, I can receive phone calls, so there's a lot of other, you know, options available with just this one thing. I velcroed the microphone for this in the same place, right in front, but it was still too loud because that's obviously right in front of my mouth and since I'm a loud mouth apparently it's overwhelming the, the little microphone so I covered it in fur that wasn't enough I covered it that fur and tape it's still not quite enough I might try putting more tape on there to help uh, shield it because it's literally right on top of my mouth and I can see how that's just not uh, enough protection but anyways uh, that's not enough so this is basically how I've been running now with my helmet the uh, helmet cam. You got the. Uh, it's a. It, I think it's a nice looking package on the side. Luckily, it's black and gray, which is kind of what I got anyway. So that works out fine. Um. Yeah. So I, I know I have no complaints about that. It's more interesting to me to see the, the maybe you can see me using the the lever on the the, the gear changing lever, or you see my hand. Uh, clutching or, or you know something's happening besides I like seeing the low angle road shot 
and I like seeing the motor, the side of the bike, the motor, the bike interacting with the road, the surroundings, rather than just a camera on my helmet only, and all you really see is my point of view, and maybe you see a little handlebar, but you don't even see the bike at all, hardly. So that's one reason I even started doing that C camera, or the clutch camera. And I, I, I like that view, and I play with it in various ways. That camera, by the way, which some of you may have figured out already, is actually one of these things. Um, and it's simply clamped onto the passenger peg and the camera goes in here. Now I have fur in there because uh, like I said if you just put the camera in there straight away and close it up you're gonna get a little bit of a vibration from the motor from the running across the, on the road or whatever it, you end up with some vibrations. It took me a long while to figure out exactly what that buzz was and that's what it turned out to be. So now I tuck in some fur to um, secure the camera, but of course it's also protecting the microphone from wind. So I get a lot cleaner engine noise and exhaust note there, uh, which I like having as far as having just clean audio that I can cut to. Sometimes I'm riding along, I don't want to be, I don't want, I don't like what I said or I made a mistake uh, or I just have nothing to say. <laughs> And uh, this gives me some clean audio with no dialogue that I can cut to whenever I want. So it's always nice to have that second clean audio camera running. And uh, the fur does snug it up and it prevents that vibration from happening. So now I just keep the fur in there so I know where it is. So that's basically my camera setups. And I think that's about it. <laughs> saw my own shadow. I was like, who's that? <laughs> right next to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs>